What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys Oracle VirtualBox. Now, as I stated in the intro of the video, I want to show you guys Oracle VirtualBox, which is a virtualization application that allows you to run virtual machines on your host's computer. And the reason people use these types of software, because it's it's mainly two of them that are the most popular is VMware and then VirtualBox, which is what I'm going to do the video on. But the reason people run these applications is so you don't have to dual boot your system and virtualized technology has become more and more popular for normal users to actually use, especially with these applications. Like a couple years ago, it was mainly used in enterprise networks where they ran um, virtual machines on servers. Well, since this application is open source, then, you know, a lot of people start using it. Uh, and this was years ago. It's been around. A lot of people been using the software. Now, I'm not saying it like it's fairly being implemented or people are just now starting to get into it. But most computers nowadays or laptops, they have the option to use virtualization on the hardware on very cheap computers so i guess that's why i'm pointing it out like that but let's go to the website i'm gonna go down and walk you guys through what virtual box is all about so you guys can get a clear understanding of what it is and how you can use it so let's get started on that okay cool so i'm at virtual Box's website and it says welcome to virtualbox.org that's the link and i'll put the link down in the description of the video if you guys want to follow along but it says virtual box is a powerful x86 and amd 64 intel 64 virtualization product for enterprise as well as home use not only is VirtualBox an extremely feature-rich, high-performance product for enterprise customers, it is also the only professional solution that is freely available as open-source software under the terms of the GNU General Public License (GPL), you know, license version two. And it says presently, VirtualBox runs on Windows, Linux, and Macintosh, as well as Solaris hosts. So. That basically reiterates what reiterates what I said earlier on how it runs on pretty much all the platforms. You can install VirtualBox for Windows. They have an EXE. You just download it, install it, and it works pretty much the same. And on Linux, you know, it's in all the major repositories because this application has been around for a long time and it's been implemented in most distributions as a standard application you can install from their repositories and currently the version of VirtualBox that's out right now is 6.1.18 which was released back in january of 2021 this year but i always recommend VirtualBox because you can install whatever operating system you want within VirtualBox and run it as if you actually have it installed on your system. And this is a good idea for people that are trying to switch over to Linux. They can test out different distributions just to see if they can get the hang of it before they actually install it on their hardware. And another thing, people that work in the cybersecurity field, a lot of times they run Kali Linux within a virtual machine so they could test out the cybersecurity tools on a network through VirtualBox and also by not removing their daily desktop environment that they like to use for Kali Linux. So VirtualBox is a great application for anybody that's interested in learning things in IT. Uh, like I said, you can install whatever operating system on it. I even installed uh, Windows XP a while back, just playing around with it since the source code has been released. But let's go on and dive into another virtual machine so we can install VirtualBox and you guys can see how to actually install it, which is not that difficult, but we'll walk, I'll walk you guys through it and then I'll walk you guys through and show you my virtual ma virtual box install where I have a whole bunch of virtual machines on it just to kind of give you an overview of what it actually looks like 
before you create a virtual machine and start playing around with it. So let's get started on that. Okay, cool. So is two ways to actually install anything on Ubuntu, especially if it's in the main repository. And I want to show you uh, both of those ways. I won't install it via the application, but they have like a software manager. You can go through and actually install VirtualBox this way. And it's very simple to actually use uh, in the GUI. And I, I know they make this so it's very user friendly. Uh, so you can not have to touch the command line, but all you have to do is search virtual box and it is in the main repository and let's press enter. But anyway, there it is right there. So virtual box, you can install it that way uh, just by clicking the install button. But you guys know I like to use the command line. So I'm gonna show you guys how to install it from the command line. And it's very simple to do. Um, if you've installed anything on Ubuntu, then it's very simple to do. Uh, all you have to do is type sudo apt uh, update. You wanna make sure you update the system first. Uh, that's one thing I always try to recommend to people. You update your system. That way it refreshes the repositories. And then if there are any updates on the system, you can run those updates on the system. But the command to install it is simply sudo apt uh, install and then VirtualBox. And one thing about VirtualBox now, it used to not come with the DKMS package. So you have to install uh, VirtualBox and then the DKMS, which is another package that's needed. Well, if you install VirtualBox, it don't install a DKMS for you. Now, one thing about installing it on here, uh, I, I don't think I'll be able to run the well i'll run i'll be able to run the application but i won't be able to install any virtual machines on it and the reason why is because i'm running this within a virtual machine i'm installing it on a virtual machine like i stated this is uh zubuntu 20 which has the xfce desktop that's why it looks like this it's a little bit different from the normal ubuntu it just has a different desktop environment but as you can see that package right there, virtual DKM, virtual box dash DKMS, you used to have to install both of those packages um, along with the main virtual box, but they combined them. Uh, and I'm not sure if they combined them on Arch Linux. So you may have to still install both of those packages separately. Uh, I'm not hundred percent sure, but just search the arch repository and just see if it's separate and if it's not separate then just install the virtual box package and it should install everything you need in order to get virtual box up and running and i'll skip ahead because this may take a little bit more time to install okay cool so virtual box is in, is installed uh one thing i want to do is just go on and open it up using the start menu uh now let's just type in virtual box because i don't know where it is under the menu so let's just wait for it to open up and let's just walk through the basic usage of VirtualBox and as you can see you got your file machine help uh, and some of these options down here on the welcome screen are up under file so I'm gonna start with file but you have your preferences you can go into your preferences uh, now this is the location where all your virtual machines is located will be located and they're located under your home directory it'll create a folder called virtual boxes VMs and so each time you create a virtual machine it'll store that virtual machine under a folder within this directory so I just wanted to point that point that out to you guys um, it'll name it whatever name you give it when you create it within virtual bytes and if we look at some of the other options they have input uh, this is like your shortcuts and then also you have uh, your virtual machine shortcuts so there's certain things in there you can change if you want to uh, you have your language it defaults to English uh, you can also select whatever language you want to use. Uh, then your display settings, you could change preferences. So every time you create a virtual machine, uh, it will use the settings that you set in the preferences. And then let's say network and then extensions. They also have extensions where you can install uh, different extensions 
uh, from virtual Bice's website so you can install those as well you can download the package install it directly from here or you can find it and find the name of the package and install it if it's in the repository but let's hit cancel there I just wanted to show you guys the preferences and then this right here is import app appliance uh, export appliance uh, now this new cloud uh, VM I don't know what that is I've never used a cloud virtual machine I'm assuming it's connecting to a VM in the cloud if you need to uh, but then you have your virtual media uh, manager so if you click that now each virtual machine you create when you create a hard drive a virtual hard drive for the actual VM it'll be listed under here as well as your optical disk so if you use like a cd or iso to install an operating system it'll start listing them all here and you can go through and modify them with the properties uh, if you need to and then floppy disk as well if you need it uh, now let's hit close there and if we go back to file there is some network operations manager uh, and host network manager i'm not going to click on these uh, but then you can reset our warnings. So if there are warnings on the system, you can reset it and then also exit. Now machine, these are basically these two options right here. So new and add. So you can add a new virtual. I mean, you could create a new virtual machine or you can add a previous virtual machine that you already have create, created. Let's say you're migrating that virtual machine to a new system. You can add it here using that feature right there and then also under help this is where you can get some help pretty much uh content you know virtual box website the bug tracker form as well as oracle's website and about virtual box and as you can see we are on version 6.1.16 so let's go down and close that and then this is where all your virtual machines will be listed right here once you start creating them now under here are some tools so if you hit here uh, you, that's the welcome screen which is already open and you have your media you can change that to the media you can change it to the network i'm not going to change it to the network because i think it may fail or crash uh, if i go into there and I won't create a virtual machine on here because like I stated, I'm in a virtual machine currently. So it may freeze up the system if I mess with anything. So I'm gonna step over to my main machine, my host machine, and just show you guys a couple virtual machines. And I'll actually create a virtual machine so you guys can see how to actually do it. So let's switch over to that right now. Okay, so I then switched over to my main machine and this is virtual box running on my host machine. Uh, and as you can see, this is the virtual machine I just had open, uh, Zubuntu 20. And this is basically how it looks uh, when you have multiple virtual machines in there created. You'll see I have a whole bunch of them. Uh, so don't so don't laugh at me or whatever, but um, I have all these virtual machines because of the videos and reviews that I do. But as you can see, this is what it looks like when you actually select a virtual machine. Uh, this is all the information that you go through and create or select within the options when you create a new virtual machine. So as you can see the name, that's the name, you know, the operating system and the the system information so base memory processor boot order as well as i have efi enabled uh and then display settings storage settings uh audio network usb you know shared folders description so it's basically all the options and then what you could do is you can go into that and i didn't mean to open up the virtual machine but if we go into the settings, so you can right click on it, go into the settings. And this is how you actually go through and modify everything. As you see, you know, these are all those options I just showed you. So I'm gonna hit cancel because uh, I don't want to mess with it. But this is basically all I really want to show you guys on here. And then also I want to show you the starting or actually how to start it. As you can see, you can start it just like I just did accidentally by double clicking on it. And then also they have some options up here when you have the one selected that you want. Uh, you can click the download, hit normal start. They have headless start and detached start. 
and a lot of times I use headless when I'm working with a server and I already know what the IP address is and I want to just SSH into it like when I do my videos where I set up server applications that's typically how I do it and I'll have my terminal up where I'm SSH into the system that way but that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And also, there are ways to donate to the channel to kind of support. Uh, if you want to, I have my cash app down there. I also have my cryptocurrency addresses. So if you want to donate some cryptocurrency, you're more than welcome to. Everything you donate to the channel, it goes right back into the channel so I can continue producing great videos for you guys on the Linux operating system. And lastly, I wanted to state that if you haven't started playing around with virtual machines, you need to start doing it now because this is a way to get better at working with different operating systems. Uh, like I stated, if you're trying to get into the cybersecurity field, they have virtual machines out there that you can download and install within VirtualBox that allow you to test your hacking skills you could download some isos that like hack the box or whatever you know it has vulnerabilities on it you can download them and install them there and then you can open up two virtual machines uh one with cali and one with the vulnerabilities and test out some of your skills so that's what a lot of people do when they're trying to go through training on how to actually understand how to protect networks as well as do red team work and all that good stuff you can install that using virtual virtual box and then also if you're interested in learning linux this is a great way to get into linux without messing with your windows operating system and you can install you know whatever virtual machine you want and then that'll get your feet wet on actually understanding how linux works and if you break something all you have to do is delete that virtual machine and reinstall or you could do like i do i'll get a system up and running and i'll just clone it for when i want to show people applications where you can use that same feature they do have a clone option within virtual box that allows you to clone a virtual machine and then open up that virtual machine make whatever changes you want to it and if you mess it up or screw it up then you could delete that copy or that clone and then clone it again if you want to you just know you have that main operating system that doesn't have any of the changes made to it you know that you can use the clone for future testing but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave comments down in the comment boxes below. And of course, keep it techie.